Hey everyone, it is Jonah and I am back with another video and today I'm going to be going over some American Idol stuff. So I'm going to be going over like the first two rounds of Hollywood week and just kind of just my thoughts on some of the artists in general and who I think kind of stood out to me in like the genre round and the duets. And then in another video, I'm going to go over my top 24 power rankings because I have already I have already seen the show the showstoppers round but i thought that that would take up a pretty big video and i kind of want to chunk it down a little bit because i want to give my thoughts on hollywood week the first two rounds first and then to give another video talking about my top 24 so yeah before i get to this video guys if you guys like american idol and not like my videos please feel free to, to subscribe down below for more content i would greatly appreciate it i'm going to be doing stuff like this all season long as well as maybe racking and some of the auditions may, hopefully a little bit of them we'll see but the, because american idol like votes like the day of it's some kind of it's kind of hard to um react to some of them because i want to watch and be able to vote too so we'll see what happens though but yeah so um let's get right into this so first round of hollywood week was the genre round and they had i believe i think at least it may have been five or six and then they had pop indie folk country rock i thought there was one more soul i'm not sure if it's soul or not but that's at least five of foot there was even one more but um in the um rock genre there was a couple people that i really thought stood out so bean is somebody that when i watched his audition i thought he kind of i was kind of in the same area as like luke and lionel like is it american idol ready like is it is he like too theatrical for American Idol? And I thought that he definitely improved each performance. Like going into like to Hollywood Week, he improved a lot. I thought that the, his 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 um John around um, audition was very strong. I really loved what he did, and he and I even saw Luke say he he got me there, and I think that that is pretty cool that Bean was able to get Luke on his side after that after after the John around. So, yeah, and then. I also thought it was it was a good choice of Bean to go in to pick the rock genre. I'm not sure if they knew how many people were picking what, but I know Rock had like I think like nine people who picked it. So it's kind of like, um, um, it's kind of like kind of making you stand out a little, a little more if you're picking a genre that not a lot of people were a part of. So that that was pretty cool. Um, Casey Bishop, I think another person that was really strong. I believe Althea Grace may have even been in Rock. I don't think so. But I know those two, Casey Bishop and Bean, really stood out to me in the rock genre. And then in the, like, the indie folk, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Wyatt. Like, Wyatt, he's just such, he's so talented. I am, he's going to be one of my favorites going forward. I mean, I love, I love that he kind of already has an identity. He has a very nice vibe to him. And I'm real, and I really, really enjoy it, enjoyed all of his performances including his general round. I thought it was just absolutely stellar. And I like that he chose to be go to the folk instead of maybe country. I think he is definitely more folky than he is country. So yeah. And then for country, we have people like Alex Miller, Caleb Kennedy, Cecile Ray. And then I liked Alex, but the, the issue I have with him is that he's kind of like, kind of what, what, what the judges were saying this whole time was that you need to kind of, um, to do things more outside your comfort zone and find your identity and that's what they kept saying to him and it's like i'm um, maybe he thinks that he doesn't have, a, have an identity but maybe singing all that old country stuff is his identity so i don't know but I, I i liked his voice a lot but i i didn't like what he did in the top 24 i thought that it was just kind of a slow song and i think that he definitely needed to do an, a pop or a pop song not a country song with a modern twist i'd even hear a modern twist to that song kind of weird but yeah then Caleb Kennedy, he and he and Alex kind of run that same lane, but I think Caleb is just more sound as an artist. He has a better, t I think he has a nicer tone, and I like that he chose to do another original song to take take a bigger risk than Alex did, and I thought he did a fantastic job with that. With, with, with I thought the original song wasn't as strong as his audition, but I still really really enjoyed this one, so I, th I, th I thought it was pretty cool. And then to see Ray, I'm like half and half on him, like I really really enjoyed his audition i thought he had a really nice tone and then his rounds in the um i'm not sure if, he, if they showed his um duet but i know they showed his genre round performance i didn't really enjoy it very much to be honest like i thought it was it was okay but like sorry i'm about to sneeze but um yeah so i didn't really 
enjoy. I didn't. I don't know. I didn't really, really see anything special about him. And then also in the in the country drama this time was Drake, and Drake was on the show two seasons ago. I I enjoyed him two seasons ago, but I did agree with, with the judge's decision last time to not send him through just because of um, maybe the pitch issues or something ready yet. And I really liked that they brought him back, but I don't like that um, he didn't choose to choose. He didn't. They didn't show the producers didn't choose to show his audition, which I thought was kind of weird. But maybe it wasn't it wasn't as strong. I don't I don't know. But like I really really enjoyed him last two seasons ago, and I, and I and I don't really like how they only showed like one performance of him up to the top twenty four. So that that was kind of weird. But yeah, and then um, pop. I mean, there's so many good pop singers. I mean, there is just too many to count. I mean, Anthony Guzman. I'm not sure if he if he was in the pop genre or not, but he surprised me in his audition. He he, he like had all the Thor stuff going on, and then he he opens his mouth and it's like oh, takes you back for a second. I thought that was very, very cool. And then um, Grace Kinsler, Alyssa Ray, all these people just have just big, big voices. Mary Jo Young, another one she's never sung before, like ever on a, on a, on a stage. At least that's what she's telling the producers. And she's just pretty amazing to me. And then you have people like – also people, some of the funny funnier moments from this episode I think were Erica Perry. I can't stand her. She was so annoying. She kept mentioning her ex. And then she, like, as she got eliminated in the, during the ho Hollywood from John around, she, like, asked the judges, are you sure? Like, are you sure you're sure? Are you sure you're sure you're sure? Like, she kept asking them that question. And I was getting kind of pissed. Like, yes, they're sure. They've already eliminated you. <laughs> and I don't know. I just didn't like her. I thought she was maybe a little too cocky with herself. And I don't like how she just kind of bundled under the, under the pressure. She has an okay voice, but I thought that she was doing a little too much and kind of acting a certain way with her voice. I think she had a really stupid tone tone that she was trying to maybe act like she had it but she really, really doesn't she was like gonna be acting like somebody she isn't so I, I can i definitely agree with the judge's decision to not move her not, not move her forward here and then um there was another guy xavier washington i thought was phenomenal what willie spence another guy he was just willie spence is just amazing like it's it's ridiculous how good this guy is literally just mm, he's perfect like he he has so many runs. He has such a nice range, and I see him going pretty far in this show. So yeah, and then now that's the end of the genre round, right? And then we're into the duets where um, the judges give a kind of a twist. They're like, I'm sure you guys have plenty of people in mind for who you want to be partners, but screw that. We're gonna be picking your partners for you, right? And I actually like this idea. I think that it adds another, another element to maybe the stress of duets. Because not only do you have to do a song in so such little time, you also now have to do it with somebody who you don't, who may, who may not know, someone that may be an, like opposite of you, someone you may not get along with. I know there was a couple, a couple people like um, Althea Grace and Camille, they didn't get along right away. Um, Claudia Conway and Hannah Everhart, those two didn't get along right away. There was plenty of pairings that didn't didn't necessarily get along. There was also some pairing, I think, to Sean and Madison Watkins. Those two got along really well. There was plenty of pairings that people, people just got really along. And then um, one thing I do want to mention is that Rhonda and then Funke, I didn't like how the only time they showed Funke was when she had the collapse. When, when she collapsed. And I also didn't like how the producers... Cause I knew something was going on because they kept... They, they obviously showed before the episode happened that, that there was an ambulance and stuff and that someone fell on the floor or whatever. And right after they performed... They kept zooming like in on Funke after after they performed in the duets, and she could tell something was a little off. She was a little disoriented, and she was kind of moving back and forth a little bit. And then at that point, I'm like, okay, I knew she was about to collapse on the floor, and I was like, oh, that would really suck. But like, I don't like how the producers only showed the performance where she ended up collapsing. I thought that was kind of rude of them, in my opinion. Like, if you're gonna do it, at least show the other performances of her too, like, I mean, at least one of them, like, maybe not, maybe her audition, I don't know, maybe that's one of her, her, her genre or her, or, or her audition, like, we don't just, like, show her collapsing and then, like, not even, barely even show her in the top 24, not even making it, so it's like, I don't know, kind of weird to me, but I guess you gotta get ratings, so, but yeah, and then, um, Wyatt killed it again, I freaking love Wyatt, he's fantastic, Chase Beckham, another guy I thought did really, really well, and then um, Hunter Metz, 
he continues to just kill it every single time. And then I think the standout to me, Murphy. Murphy did a fantastic job of opening up more in his duet round, showing, showing more of the voice. Because I know, like, he has a nice vibe to him, but I really thought he had a, he did a great job of showing off for the higher range of his voice and just showing his, like, he's a really cool vibe. And I like how he went barefoot with Lizzie. I thought that was very cool of him to do. And very, I think that was very, very unique. But I don't, I think, kind of, I, guess I'm to, I guess I'm kind of talking more about Top 24 here, but... I think the one decision, there was two decisions that I, I'll, I'll mention the other one in the next video, but there was one decision that I just could not get on board with, and that was sending Murphy home. Like, I don't think they should have sent Murphy home. He had a pretty pretty big fan base, and, a different, and if the producers wanted ratings, they would have kept Murphy on the show, and I think that was probably one of the bigger mistakes they've made in the recent seasons was not keeping Murphy, because I definitely think that he would have been ready he is I mean, he may not have gotten like far far but he would have gotten votes and i think he would have made it to the top 10 if they had kept him on the show which i like i don't understand people <laughs> but yeah and then grace kinsler and um Alyssa ray two very big voices that were paired together to see if they were, were going to overpower each other they did it they did a fantastic job i mean show stopping <laughs> i know like it's the next the next round they had a show stopping do it performance i mean they immediately went through like it wasn't even like a doubt just fantastic all around and then I, so like at this point in the show i'm wondering to myself there's so there's some people like i i watched our audition so like, okay they're gonna go pretty far on the show then then they never showed them like benson boone which i know what happened with him but at the point when i was watching i didn't so benson boone i hadn't seen yet ash Ruder i hadn't seen yet but i heard that she may have gotten cut in the genre round i don't know and then one more is annalee list which i do know she made in the top 24 but i i don't know don't know why they chose not to show her in the genre on the duets because I, I feel like it's very unlikely for annalee annalee to have to have had two bad performances in a row but i don't know and then um yeah i i thought that overall the judges picking the duets i think made it a little better in a way because maybe you got an unexpected pairing that you wouldn't have thought about but i also um liked how the judges kind of went around while they were while they were rehearsing and giving them comments i really enjoyed that i thought that if you, if a judge is giving you a comment which you would i kind of like some people some people people may think that what alex miller did kind of goes against what what luke said but the ICs, though, they tried to figure out another song when nothing was really coming together, so they decided to do, do the original one. So at least they tried to do it, right? It's not like it's not like Alex just said, no, 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 we're going to stick with this. He, they said that, or at least they told the cameras that they tried to do a couple different songs, but nothing was just coming together on time, so they went back to the original country, country song that they were going to be doing. Which I thought that, that, well, that that's okay. Like, stuff happened, like, and I think that it's, it's, it's a safe play. But I, I didn't think Alex was going to go home necessarily off of that performance alone. But yeah. And then um, one guy that I thought that they should, should have sent forward is Zachary. Um, Katie Turner's boyfriend. He was on the show the first season. And I really like his voice. I just feel like they sent him home too early. And I think that they should have given him, given him a chance. At least in the top 64 or whatever it was. Well, I guess they don't really know how many. They just kind of just said it was 64 people. They should have at least given him a chance to perform for the top 24, in my opinion. Just because, like, I think it would have been cool to see him perform, like, on a stage. They haven't really had that yet. They haven't really... Sh and what's the hurt in moving him forward one more round? Because even if you don't make it to the top 24, you can still come back and audition again. So that's just my opinion on it. But, yeah. And then another person that I thought may have gone home too early was Claudia Conway. I liked her voice. I think that she needs more of an, more of an identity. And I, and I didn't really understand that... She kept talking about wanting to find her own her own identity and everything, and then she just goes out and like so, and like all these all of her stuff is about where her mom and her dad and her mom being here with her, her, her with Hollywood Week and then her dad being there for her her audition. I just kind of feel like if you're trying to get away from like ha having your identity be of what your parents is, then why show them so much? That's just my opinion on it. Maybe maybe it wasn't really her decision. Maybe the producers wanted her to. I don't know, but yeah, I thought that was really weird. And then overall, I thought the first two rounds were great. And at this point, I believe we're down to the top 64, which 64 is a lot. Because usually I think they do one more round. They do the um, solos, I, I believe, what they call them, to get down to like to the top, I don't know, 40-something people. So then you can, they can get down to the top 20, to top 24 for the lives. But 
I, maybe maybe they had they had to cut stuff out for COVID, or maybe that's what they're going to be. That's that what that's what they're going to do always now. Maybe they just didn't have enough people like normal. I don't know what it was, but whatever the case may be, they skipped the sh solos round. Now we're on to the showstoppers round, so singing in front of a band, and then getting to show off your stuff. So yeah, and I will talk about that in my next video. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I think I'm American Idol was pr these these two rounds are pretty cool. I enjoyed I enjoyed a lot of people and I'm definitely looking forward to hearing what people do in the live shows. So yeah, I'm um, thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll be back with more videos later. Thank you guys.